Hi, I'm Steve Elms, and this is Come and See, our final session. It's entitled Presence or Life Giving Spirit. As usual, going to give you something to think about to, uh, to get going. And we're thinking this week about um, gifts that we've received. Maybe to think about a gift that was precious, a gift that was unusual, and a gift that was unexpected. See what you make of that. In, in your discussions. After Jesus was raised from the dead, he gave some instructions to his disciples. Don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift the Father has promised, the gift I told you about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the ends of the earth. What Jesus was saying was that the same spirit that lived in him and motivated and empowered him in mission would also live in his followers and motivate them too in mission. How that came about, well, we're going to read the story now from the book of Acts, which tells us how the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father, was given to the waiting followers of Jesus. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven, when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own languages. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and address the crowd. Fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
the promise is for you and your children and all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And those who accepted his message were baptised and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. It's an exciting passage and we've got the opportunity now um, to reflect and to discuss our, our reactions and thoughts to the passage. So that'll be the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do right now and, and that will come up on the screen as it normally does. After you've had some time to reflect and respond and to think together, um, then there'll be some other passages from the Bible. These are from letters written by St. Paul to the early churches uh, uh, that came about um, after Jesus rose from the dead and the gift of Pentecost was given. Now, I've chosen passages that speak directly about the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer and in the church community. And uh, I'd like you to just have a look at those and see what you make of them. What do we learn there about the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives today? So Christians worship God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Trinity, three in one, and one in three, a perfect unity and a mystery. Of those three, it's often the Holy Spirit that is perhaps most difficult to get hold of in our, in our heads, uh, in our thinking. It's maybe helpful to think of the Holy Spirit as the active presence of God that kind of makes God tangible to us, that brings us into encounter with him. Now that happens in a number of ways and the passages you've just been looking at kind of pull out some of those ways. And I just want to just say a few things now <clears throat> about three of those. Firstly, the Holy Spirit brings assurance, a deep assurance in the heart of those who follow Jesus. You have not been given a spirit of fear, Paul writes, but a spirit of sonship and daughtership so that we cry out from within, Abba, Father. Abba was the word that Jesus used to speak to God and of God. It means something like dad. So it's an intimate term, but also a respectful term too. But we don't just have a word to use. The, uh, Paul, Paul is saying that the Holy Spirit helps us to know on the inside of us that we belong and who we belong to and how we are loved by God, making real and tangible our belonging. The second thing I wanted to, to note 
is the way in which the Holy Spirit brings change and transformation in our lives. Those who follow Christ grow to be like Christ. There's fruit in their lives and the, the fruit is given by Paul in another one of his letter. He talks about um, the fruit of the Spirit as love and joy, and patience and gentleness and kindness and perseverance and so on. These things grow like fruit and are a work of the Spirit. It's helpful to think of them as fruit because they don't suddenly appear in our lives, um, but they grow as we travel and journey. And this is a work of the Holy Spirit. A third thing is gifts. And you will have looked at that list of gifts that Paul, uh, he, 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 he gives. Gifts of wisdom and of uh, miracles, of faith, of uh, speaking in un unlearned languages and interpretation and so on. And these gifts are given to the church to build up the church in, in goodness and in life and in mission. And there's this lovely picture of the Holy Spirit just giving gifts to different people, different members of the church. And when these gifts are used, they help us to know God, to know his heart and to move in his power. There are many other things we could say about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, it is the Holy Spirit that actually helps a person to, to, cut, to make the journey of faith and to, to see and to know who Jesus is and to say yes to the life that is in Christ. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to read the Bible and to understand it. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to pray. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to find guidance through some of life's big decisions. In fact, we live this Christian life in the enabling power of the Spirit, the very presence of God. So how does this actually happen? I mean, how does a person receive the Holy Spirit? And can we be confident that God will always give this precious gift? There are two little bits of the Bible that I want to just point to, to begin an answer to that. The first is a, a bit that we've already read. Do you remember when Peter stood up and talked to the crowds and said, we're not drunk, this is what the prophets foretold, and tells them of Jesus, of his life and his resurrection. And uh, you remember the crowds cut to the heart, say, you know, what shall we do? What's our response? And Jesus says for them to, to repent, to turn from their sin, from their life without God, and to be baptised, to commit themselves to, to follow Christ. And he says that two things will happen. One is that they will know forgiveness of sin. And the second is that they will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I love the way Peter says, and this is for you, it's for your children, and it's for all who are far off. The gift of God's presence, of his, of his life and his love, are given um, to all who ask all who come to Christ to know their sins forgiven and to walk with him. There's another little bit of uh, the New Testament that I really love to, uh, to, to share when thinking about what it means to be filled with the Spirit of God. And that's uh, Jesus just teaching on, on this very thing. He says, ask and you'll receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Three different ways of saying the same thing. Jesus really wants to get across that God wants to give this gift of his very presence to us. There's another little story that Jesus tells just after that. He, he asked the question, he said, now which of you fathers and mothers, if your child asked you for bread, would give them a stone? Uh, which of you, if they asked, for a fish would produce a scorpion live and, and wriggling around on the plate. And, and Jesus said, you wouldn't do that, would you? That's, that's not how parents parent. So just imagine God, the, the greatest of parents, the ultimate father. Won't he give good gifts? Won't he give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And God only gives good gifts. So how are we filled with the Spirit? Well, it happens as we make our response to Christ and give our lives 
to follow him, receiving forgiveness and life. But it also happens as we ask. And that can happen in a lot of different ways. Some people have asked God to to fill them with his spirit on their own, just in their bedroom. That's what happened to me. Um, Others have done it with others around, perhaps praying for them. And experiences really, really differ. For some, this is a really emotional experience. For others, it's not an emotional experience, but the impact of that prayer, of that receiving, shows up um, in other ways later on. I want to just invite now a friend of mine to share his story of, of being filled with the Holy Spirit, of encountering God in that way. I'm going to hand to him now. Spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. Hi, my name's James, and um, yeah, that's quite a statement to make, but uh, I make it from my heart. I've been a Christian for three and a half years, and prior to that, I kind of dipped in and out of church quite a lot. I came from, come from a Christian family. I'm married to a very spirit-filled lady and have been for 13 years. But for the first 10 years of our marriage, I didn't really get God, didn't really get Christianity, and the Holy Spirit was just this mythical being, I think, that just kind of just was somewhere off there in the in the distance. Um, three and a half years ago, January 2017, my wife was doing an all-age talk at the church, and she was doing it on Psalm 34, which is taste and see that the Lord is good. It was just the, the verse for the year. And now, I don't know about you, but when it comes to building things or doing things, I, I'm not really an instructions person. I don't really follow instructions. I'm more of a experiential, let's get on, let's do it, let's have a go. And so taste and see was like a, an invitation to me to actually try something. I'd got some head knowledge, I'd, I, I knew the stories in the Bible, but that head knowledge had never reached my heart, it never reached my spirit. And when people talked about feelings from the heart, I never really got it. I couldn't understand how could you feel something from your heart. But after that service, after that that talk, I I started feeling different. I was I was I was hearing worship songs in my head as I as I walked around London and uh, prayers kept coming into my head. And I was like, what is going on? And it was a time when Alpha was being done. Alpha, the, the course for that comes after Come and See, um, encourages people to share and talk about their, their discussions with faith and stuff. Alpha was being advertised by Bear Grylls. And Bear Grylls is a great fan. I'm a great fan of Bear Grylls. And it's just, I was just like drawn to posters everywhere about Alpha. But I wasn't one of the kind of people that wants to sh- share little things in small groups. So I, I never ventured into that kind of thing. But what I did start doing was watching the Alpha film series online. And just hearing and seeing what they were talking about, just started, things started coming together for me. And over these, the next three or four weeks, I started waking up at three o'clock in the morning with tears streaming down my face, warm loving tears I can only say that it was God God was stirring something in me like an awakening within me this Holy Spirit was coming meeting me in my dreams and waking me up and I didn't get tired but I I got very distracted very distracted and um, I started talking to my wife eventually about it I didn't want to get her hopes up and then she suggested that I thought about forgiveness and I thought about asking Jesus into my life. I said, well, yeah, I'll, I'll think about that. And then she said, well, there's a book you could read. It's called Christianity Explored by Rico Tice. It's a similar theme to Alpha. And do you know what? Reading the book, the, just the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle seemed to come together in a three-dimensional form. It was it was God, this Jesus, the Holy Spirit. And for me, it just centered and grounded everything it was that the holy spirit was speaking to me through the book and through the uh, the alpha film series i remember sitting down with my wife one evening in um late feb late late january and uh, i put on this song called broken vessels it's it's become a real a real special favorite of mine it's like a, a twist on amazing grace and uh, i just wept the whole way through it as warmth and love from God through his Holy Spirit just came and flooded me. And it was like that head knowledge had gone to my heart. I now got it, I understood it. So I put put the song on again, not knowing that actually I'd spend the next five or six minutes in tears again. From that point on, I've never looked back. Um, I got baptized a few weeks later and I've just had an urge, a desire to encounter God. 
but also tell other people about him. And it's not something I, I'm, I'm good at, telling people stuff, but I started asking God for his, his help. I said, give, give me the boldness, give me the courage, give me the strength to share and prompt me. And the prompts come from the Holy Spirit. And I've had many occasions where I've been with people and there's just been this this little nudge or something. I was with a contractor once. It's a great story. I was with a contractor. Uh, I'm a building surveyor. And this, this guy just got out of his van and he was hobbling over. And I said, what's the matter? He goes, I've got four broken ribs. And I just felt this, 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 this prompt, pray for him, pray for him. I said to him, look, look I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm new to it. And that, but I'd, I'd really like to pray for you. And I, I believe, I believe God can heal you. And he just looked at me and laughed. He said, yeah, yeah, you can pray for me later. I said, no, no, I just, can I pray for you now? He said, yeah, yeah, okay. So he, he, touched his his, uh, his side of his ribs his, his and his chest and uh, I just said God in the name of Jesus heal this man of his broken ribs and, and, and restore them he looked at me and he thanked me and he said that nah, still hurt mate I was like oh, okay and the next day he rang me up he said I have no idea how to say this to you but I woke up this morning I have absolutely no pain in my ribs and I just felt this this affirmation from God through his spirit, my, my back started tingling. It's like, um, I, I, sometimes when the Holy Spirit comes upon me, I get this feeling of like goosebumps, but a really intense goosebump, waves of them rippling up and down my back. And uh, yeah, it was God. God came and healed him. God, through his Holy Spirit, healed this guy. I, I seek God out wherever I can. I go to Christian conferences and just adore being in his presence. But don't get me wrong, it's not always amazing. There's not, it's not like rose-tinted spectacles in my life. There's still things that go on that, are, that aren't amazing. There's still the, the hardships. But I know that deep down through all of those things, God is there beside me. I may not always feel his presence. But when I do, when his presence floods me, when the Holy Spirit comes upon me, there's nothing like it. You, there's nothing like it. Nothing compares to that feeling see God God pursued me for a long time I ran from him and he pursued me and I believe he pursues each one of us he's standing there knocking at our door he's such a gentle person he's just knocking at the door and he just wants us to turn around and just to let him in so I challenge you ask him into your life ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit and you'll never look back it's a powerful story isn't it and there are so many other stories of followers of Christ who have just known that life-giving spirit um, in their experience. And it's important that we emphasize that in this session because uh, Christianity can sometimes be typified as a set of rules to follow or a code of life. Whereas in fact, it's a relationship. It's about encounter. It's about the very life of God flowing through us. I'm going to give you opportunity now to just stay with your own thoughts and to reflect as we normally do. <clears throat> There'll be uh, a little bit of music as there normally is and some words there. Now, this week will be a little bit different because there are going to be more words. In fact, what you'll see um, are the words of a prayer. Prayers of commitment and response to Christ that draw on the different themes that we follow throughout these weeks, right up to this final session. Now, that will function in different ways um, for different people. It may well be that this is your moment where you want to say, yes, I, I want in to this. I, wa I want to say yes to Jesus, to forgiveness, to life lived in his company, filled with his spirit. And you may find that these words are words you can pray right now. And I just really want to encourage you to do that. On the other hand, it may be that that's not where you are in your journey. And so allow these words just to give expression to what commitment to Christ, what response to Christ might look like. And please don't feel under pressure to make these your prayers right now. So I'm going to leave you uh, with those and I'll just say some, some final words right at the end.
So we've arrived at the end, not just the end of this session, but the end of our course. I hope that it's been of value to you in your journey. And I hope that it won't be the end of your journey of exploring faith. It doesn't have to be. If you've been following this course with others in some kind of group context, then those who have led the course will no doubt offer you some ways forward. It may be that you decide as a group to continue meeting to explore further together. If you've been doing this on your own, perhaps using this online resource in your home, then I want to encourage you to, um, to keep going with, with the journey, not to kind of close it off. And um, also to say that I or anyone really on the team at Bookham Baptist Church will be really willing to help you um, uh, or teams in other churches that you might be connected to would, would love to support you in your journey from here. There are a few details of how you can contact us um, just below this video. So God bless you as you travel on. Uh, may you know um, peace and assurance. May you come to know Christ and, note, and know him more, to follow him and find that fullness of life to which Christ calls us. And be an agent of change in the world, bringing healing where there is brokenness and hope where there is despair. The Lord bless you.